Universal Center for Renovation presents Historical Israelites. This is strictly for educational purposes and commentary of biblical and secular historical literature. So sit back and enjoy. Moses, Subatomic Particles, The Holy Bible, and Plato. The book of Acts, chapter 7, verse 22 to 23, King James Version. And Moses was learned in all the wisdom of the Egyptians, and was mighty in words and in deeds. And when he was full of forty years old, it came into his heart to visit his brethren, the children of Israel. Contemporary English Version Moses was given the best education in Egypt. He was a strong man and a powerful speaker. When Moses was 40 years old, he wanted to help the Israelites because they were his own people. This is a 2,000 year old fresco painting of Moses found in the synagogue of Dera Europis. Moses is considered the most important prophet in Judaism and one of the most important prophets in Christianity, Islam the Jews' faith, the Baha'i faith, and other Abrahamic religions. According to both the Bible and the Quran, Moses was the leader of the Israelites and lawgiver to whom the authorship or acquisition from heaven of the Torah, the first five books of the Bible, is attributed According to the book of Exodus, Moses was born in a time when his people, the Israelites, an enslaved minority, were increasing in population. And as a result, the Egyptian pharaoh worried that they might ally themselves with Egypt's enemies. Moses' Hebrew mother, Josabed, secretly hid him when Pharaoh ordered all newborn Hebrew boys to be killed in order to reduce the population of the Israelites. Through Pharaoh's daughter, identified as Queen Pythia in the Midrash, the child was adopted as a foundling from the Nile and grew up with the Egyptian royal family. After killing an Egyptian slave master who was beating a Hebrew, Moses fled across the Red Sea to Midian, where he encountered the angel of the Lord, speaking to him from within a burning bush on Mount Horeb, which he regarded as the mountain of God. God sent Moses back to Egypt to demand the release of the Israelites from slavery. Moses said that he 
could not speak eloquently. So God allowed Aaron, his elder brother, to become his spokesperson. After the 10 plagues, Moses led the exodus of the Israelites out of Egypt and across the Red Sea, after which they based themselves at Mount Sinai, where Moses received the Ten Commandments. After 40 years of wandering in the desert, Moses died on Mount Nebo at the age of 120, within sight of the promised land. Moses was the leader of the Israelites and lawgiver to whom the authorship or acquisition from heaven of the Torah, the first five books of the Bible, is attributed. The Torah, the law, the first five books of the Bible written by Moses. Torah, the Torah, instruction, teaching, or law is the compilation of the first five books of the Hebrew Bible, namely the books of Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, and Deuteronomy. It is known as the Pentateuch, or the five books of Moses by Christians. It is also known as the written Torah in Jewish tradition. If meant for liturgic purposes, it takes the form of a Torah scroll. If in bound book form, it is called Kumash. If meant for liturgic purposes, it takes the form of a Torah scroll. Jews of Harlem, New York, 1940. Photographer Alexander Island from the Jewish Museum, New York. If meant for liturgic purposes, it takes the form of a Torah scroll. Liturgical, relating to liturgy or public worship, ceremonial, ritual, solemn, like Sabbath days. Kumash, Judaism, Kumash, is a Torah in printed and book-bound form, also known as a codex, as opposed to a surfer Torah, which is a scroll. The word comes from the Hebrew word for five, Hamesh, or Hamash. It is also known by the Latinized Greek term Pentateuch in common printed editions. The five books of Moses in book form, also known as the Pentateuch. Alternative names, Pentateuch, Christian scholars usually refer to the first five books of the Hebrew Bible as the Pentateuch. It was a term first used in Hellenistic Judaism of Alexandria, Egypt. The Torah starts from the beginning of God creating the world. Through the beginnings of the people of Israel, their descent into Egypt and the giving of the Torah at Mount Sinai. It ends with the death of Moses just before the people of Israel cross to the promised land of Canaan. In Hebrew, the five books of the Torah 
are identified by the incipits or the beginning word or phrase in each book. In the common English, names for the books are derived from the Greek Septuagint and reflect the essential theme of each book. So, in Hebrew, Bereshet means literally in the beginning. In the common English, the title would be Genesis, from Genesis, creation. The Hebrew, Shemat, which means literally names. In the English, Exodus, which means exit. In the Hebrew, Vaakara, which means he called. The English, Leviticus, relating to the Levites. In Hebrew, Bamadar which means in the desert of, in the English, numbers. In Hebrew, Devarim, which means things or words. In the English, Deuteronomy, which means the second law. Genesis. The book of Genesis is the first book of the Torah. It is divisible or divided into two parts the primeval history chapter 1 through 11 and the ancestral history chapters 12 through 50 primeval history is the name given by biblical scholars to the first 11 chapters of the book of genesis in the hebrew bible these chapters convey the story of the first years of the world's existence and Moses was learned in all the wisdom of the Egyptians and was mighty in words and in deeds the book of Acts chapter 7 verse 22 antiquities of the Jews Book 2, Chapter 9 He was Moses. He was, therefore, educated with great care. So the Hebrews depended on him and were of good hopes that great things would be done by him. But the Egyptians were suspicious of what would follow such his Education Stolen Legacy by George G. M. James The education of the Egyptian priests in A. The Seven Liberal Arts B. Secret Systems of Languages and Mathematical Symbolism C. Magic A. The Education of the Egyptian Priest and the Seven Liberal Arts Their education included the Seven Liberal Arts the Egyptian Priest The ancient Egyptian priest class were trained in the liberal arts. Liberal arts education, also known as the liberal arts and pure sciences, is the traditional academic course of study in Western higher education. Liberal arts takes the term art in the sense of a learned skill or academic skill rather than specifically the fine arts. Liberal arts education can refer to studies in a College of Arts and Sciences degree program, a liberal arts college, or more generally in its broadest sense It can refer to education at a university, college, or community college.
such a course of study has a heavy emphasis on humanities, arts, and pure science forms of the natural sciences, formal sciences, and social sciences. Contrasted by courses of study that emphasizes vocational education or technical education over the aforementioned or in some cases contrasted with those that have a sole emphasis in professional development, applied sciences, or religion-based courses. Although professional development, applied sciences, and religious studies education can go hand in hand with liberal arts education, none of which are mutually exclusive. Where a course of study can share elements of both liberal arts and professional development education. The seven liberal arts. The term liberal arts for an educational curriculum dates back to classical antiquity in the West, but has changed its meaning considerably, mostly expanding it. The seven subjects in the ancient and medieval meaning came to be divided into the trivium of rhetoric, grammar, and logic, and the quadrivium of astronomy, often more astrology, mathematics, geometry, and music. A liberal arts education is known to bring about research and transferable skills in its students and practitioners. The trivium, one, rhetoric, two, grammar, three, logic, the quadrivium, four, astronomy, five, mathematics, six, geometry, seven, music. Before they became known by their Latin variations, arts liberales, septum arts liberales, studia liberella, the liberal arts were the continuation of ancient Greek methods of inquiry that began with a desire for a universal understanding. Pythagoras argued that there was a mathematical and geometrical harmony to the cosmos or the universe. His followers linked the four arts of astronomy, mathematics, geometry, and music into one area of study to form the disciplines of the medieval quadrivium. In the 4th century BC Athens, the government of the polis or city-state respected the ability of rhetoric or public speaking above almost everything else. Eventually, rhetoric, grammar, and dialectic, or logic, became the educational program of the trivium. Together, they came to be known as the seven liberal arts. Originally, these subjects or skills were held by classical antiquity to be essential for a free person, liberalis, worthy of a free person, to inquire in order to take an active part in civic life. Something that included, among other things, participating in public debate, defending oneself in court, serving on juries, and participating in military service. The trivium 
In classical education is a set of three phases comprised of the grammar, logic, and rhetoric stages in which children first learn knowledge, then understanding, and finally wisdom. The trivium part of the seven liberal arts was first used in antiquity and then adapted to suit medieval Christian times. What is the trivium and classical education, knowledge, wisdom, and understanding? True learning, mastery, grammar, knowledge, logic, understanding, rhetoric, wisdom. Proverbs chapter 4 verse 5 through 7. Get wisdom, get understanding. Forget it not, neither decline from the words of my mouth. Forsake her not, and she shall preserve thee. Love her, and she shall keep thee. Wisdom is the principal thing. Therefore get wisdom, and with all thy getting get understanding. Proverbs chapter 4. Verse 5 through 7. Trivium. The trivium is the lower division of the seven liberal arts and comprises grammar, logic, and rhetoric. Grammar, logic, and rhetoric were essential to a classical education as explained in Plato's dialogues. The three subjects together were denoted by the word trivium during the Middle Ages. But the tradition of first learning those three subjects was established in ancient Greece. Plato's dialogues. Etymology, trivium, the place where three roads meet. The subjects of the trivium are the foundation for the quadrivium, the upper division of the medieval education in the liberal arts, which consists of arithmetic, numbers as abstract concepts, Geometry, numbers in space. Music, numbers in time. And astronomy, numbers in space and time. Educationally, the trivium and the quadrivium imparted to the student the seven liberal arts of classical antiquity. Grammar teaches the mechanics of language to the student. Logic, also dialectic, is the mechanics of thought and of analysis. Rhetoric is the application of language in order to instruct and to persuade the listener and the reader. It is the knowledge or grammar now understood or logic and being transmitted outward as wisdom rhetoric. Classical liberals arts education of antiquity. George G. M. James Stolen Legacy Greek philosophy is stolen Egyptian philosophy. 
Greek philosophy was the offspring of the Egyptian mystery system. A. The Greek concept of the atom was erroneous. The Greeks derived the meaning of the word atom from one alpha. A negative prefix meaning not and timnian the present infinitive active of timno to cut the two derivatives together meaning that which cannot be cut for centuries the world has been misled by this misconception of the Greeks a fact which no doubt had impeded the progress of atomic research by Western scholars who had believed in the so-called Greek origin of philosophy or primitive science. George G. M. James believed that the ancient Greeks set back scientific technological education back by proposing that the atom was uncuttable. He knew that the ancient Egyptians were educated in the existence of subatomic particles. The atom could be split. George G. M. James further writes, Today, however, the Greek conception of the atom is no longer tenable since modern science has successfully split or cut the atom. Subatomic particle. In physics, a subatomic particle is a particle smaller than an atom. According to the standard model of particle physics, a subatomic particle can be either a composite particle, which is composed of other particles. For example, a proton, neutron, or meson, or an elementary particle, which is not composed of other particles. For example, an electron, photon, or muron. Particle physics and nuclear physics study these particles and how they interact. In the last video, a picture or drawing of the ancient Egyptian goddess Nu, who was a personification of subatomic particles, was drawn with wave-like patterns on her body because these particles exhibit wave-like properties. A composite particle, a proton, is made up is made of two up quark and one down quark, which quarks which are elementary particles. Subatomic particles, the atom, could be cut or broken down into a nucleus. The nucleus can be broken down to the proton, which contain quarks. So atoms can be cut. Atoms was misnamed by the Greeks, uncuttable. When you cut an atom, you have subatomic particles or sub below the atom particles. The atom. An atom is a particle 
that consists of a nucleus of protons and neutrons surrounded by a cloud of electrons. The atom is the basic particle of the chemical elements and the chemical elements are distinguished from each other by the number of protons that are in their atoms. History of Atomic Theory and Philosophy Atomism or Atomism The basic idea that matter is made up of tiny indivisible particles is an old idea that appeared in many ancient and many ancient cultures, not just the Egyptians. The word atom is derived from the ancient Greek word atomos, which means uncuttable. George G. M. James Stolen Legacy Memphite or the city of Memphis in Egypt. Memphite theology opens great possibilities for modern scientific research. The Memphite theology was the creation story of the ancient Egyptians. The ancient Egyptians had their own book of Genesis. The scholars call this story the Memphite theology. Shabaka Stone. The Shabaka Stone, sometimes Shabako, is a relic incised or cut with an ancient Egyptian religious text which dates from the 25th dynasty of Egypt. In latter years, the stone was likely used as a millstone, which damaged the hieroglyphs. This damage is accompanied by other intentional defacements, leaving the hieroglyphic inscription in poor condition. Historical Origins Originally erected as a lasting monument at the Great Temple of Ptah in Memphis, in the late 8th century BCE, the stone was at some point removed, for unknown reasons, to Alexandria, Egypt. From there, it was transported by a naval vessel from Alexandria, Egypt to England. Shabaka Stone Content The text includes two main divisions with a short introduction and an ending summary. The first division relates the unification of Upper and Lower Egypt. Ptah works through Horus to accomplish this unification. The other is a creation myth, the Memphite theology or Memphite drama that establishes Ptah as the creator of all things, including gods. The gods of the Egyptians were forces of nature or things like the atom, the planets, and the stars. They were personifications for certain natural phenomena. The Shambhaka Stone The Shambhaka Stone has the creation 
story of the ancient Egyptians. The Memphite theology or the creation story of the ancient Egyptian. The literal and the figurative meaning behind the story. Zero, the Big Bang. That's what the Egyptians call Zep Tepe. One, hot and dense state of rapid expansion. The Egyptians call this the goddess Nun. Two, energy converted into subatomic particles, quarks and electrons. The ancient Egyptians called this the primordial mound or pata or primordial lotus. Number three, atoms and light elements begin to form. The Egyptians call this atom or atom. Number four, suns, stars, and galaxies begin to form. The ancient Egyptians called the sun Ra or atom ray. Number five, planets and life begin to form. The ancient Egyptians called the planets Ened. These were the Egyptians' name for the planets. The literal and figurative meaning of the ancient Egyptian gods and cosmology. The ancient Egyptians worshipped the creature rather than the creator. Stage 3. Atoms and light elements begin to form. Atum. Atum was the name that the Egyptians gave the atom. Menphite theology is science. The ancient Egyptian god Atum was the personification of the atom. Stage three, the atom. Atum, Adam. Stolen Legacy by George G. M. James. The identity between the Egyptian sun god Atum or Atom and the Atom of Modern Science. There are two things which I desire to point out in connection with the relationship between Atum or Atom the Egyptian sun god, and the atom of modern science. These things are, one, the similarity of attributes and the similarity of names. The Egyptian god Atum or Adam means self-created everything and nothing, a combination of positive and negative principles. Below the atom exist subatomic particles, or beneath atom was pata and nun. These so called gods were personifications of subatomic particles, quarks, and electrons. Subatomic particles, the atom, atom, subatomic particles, quarks, pata, and none. These are scientific concepts because the ancient Egyptians had a liberal education. George G. M. James, Stolen Legacy, The Menphite 
Theology is the basis of all important doctrines in Greek philosophy, history, and description. The Memphite theology is an inscription on a stone now kept in the British Museum. It contains the theological, cosmological, and philosophical views of the Egyptians. It has already been referred to in my treatment of Plato's doctrines. Dr. George G.M. James believe, or Professor George G.M. James believe, Plato received his education from the Egyptians. And his philosophical point of view is the Memphite theology. But it must be repeated here to show its full importance as the basis of the entire field of Greek philosophy. The stone is dated to 700 BC and bears the name of an Egyptian pharaoh, Shabaka. The Memphite theology records the scientific world view of the ancient Egyptians. It was a basis for all important doctrines in Greek philosophy, including Plato's. Plato, 428 or 427 or 424 or 423 to 348 or 347 BC, was an ancient Greek philosopher born in Athens during the classical period in ancient Greece. In Athens, Plato founded the Academy, a philosophical school where he taught the philosophical doctrines that would later become known as Platonism. Modern reception of Plato teachings or transmission of the Greek classics to the modern day world. Plato's thought is often compared with that of his most famous student, Aristotle, whose reputation during the Western Middle Ages so completely eclipsed that of Plato that the scholastic philosophers referred to Aristotle as the philosopher. The only Platonic work known to Western scholarship was Timaeus until translations were made after the fall of Constantinople, which occurred during 1453. However, the study of Plato continued in the Byzantine Empire, the Caliphates, during the Islamic Golden Age and Spain during golden age of Jewish culture. During the early Islamic era, Persian, Arab, and Jewish scholars translated much of Plato into Arabic and wrote commentaries and interpretations on Plato's, Aristotle's, and other Platonist philosophers' works. Plato is also referenced by Jewish philosopher and Talmudic scholars Maimonides in his The Guide for the Perplex. Many of these commentaries on Plato was translated or were translated from Arabic into Latin and as such influenced medieval scholastic philosophers. Plato's influence has been felt throughout the centuries in multiple civilizations, Greek, Roman, Persian, Arab, Byzantine, and Western civilization. Plato, 
The doctrines of Plato are traced to their Egyptian origin as he taught nothing new. George G.M. James, Stolen Legacy. George G.M. James, born November 9th, 1893, died June 30th, 1956, was a Guyanese American historian and author, known for his 1954 book, Stolen Legacy, which argues that Greek philosophy and religion originated in ancient Egypt. James earned bachelor's and master's degrees at Durham University in England and gained his doctorate at Columbia University in New York. He was professor of logic and Greek at Livingstone College in Salisbury, North Carolina. Before working at Arkansas AMNN College in Pine Bluff, Arkansas, James died two years after publishing Stolen Legacy in 1954. James was a Freemason and was associated with Prince Hall Freemasonry. Stolen Legacy James was the author of the widely circulated Stolen Legacy. The Greeks were not the authors of Greek philosophy, but the people of North Africa commonly called the Egyptians. Also known as Stolen Legacy, Greek philosophy is Stolen Egyptian philosophy first published in 1954. In this book, James claims that among other things, the ancient Greeks were not the original authors of Greek philosophy, which he argues was mainly based on ideas and concepts that were borrowed without acknowledgement or indeed stolen. From the ancient Egyptians. He argues that Alexander the Great invaded Egypt and captured the royal library at Alexandria and plundered it. That Aristotle's ideas came from those stolen books and that he established his school within the library. The book draws on the writings of Freemasonry to support its claims that the Greco-Roman mysteries originate from an Egyptian mystery system. Although, as historians point out, James does not cite these sources accurately. James invoke ancient Greek sources such as Herodotus, who describe the cultural debt of Greece to Egypt. He also mentions prominent Greek philosophers such as Pythagoras and Plato, who are said to have studied in Egypt. He attributes Democritus' use of the term atom, indivisible particle, to the Egyptian deity Atum who symbolizes completeness and indivisibility. George G. M. James An Investigation into the Death of Professor George G. M. James a couple of months back, I read a blog that raised questions about the death of Professor George G. M. James, author of the controversial work of history, 
Stolen Legacy. The writer of the blog implied that shortly after the publication of Stolen Legacy, James had died under mysterious, perhaps even violent, circumstances. Did the Greeks still or plagiarized the science of the Egyptians? The answer is yes and no. Yes, because the Greeks did study in the Egyptians' schools. No, because all nations at that time held a general understanding of the same science and knowledge of the creation of matter. Egypt, Babylon, Persia, India, China, and of course Israel were the nations with the best kept records. So many scholars were naturally attracted to these hot spots of learning. Also, I would like to mention that the Greeks did say that Adam was uncuttable, but Plato did teach about subatomic particles. Plato's name for subatomic particles is form. That same name, form, is also used in the Bible, the book of Genesis, for subatomic particles. Also, I would like to state for the record about the classical Greeks like Plato, Aristotle, and Pythagoras, historical documents exist that would validate that they were of Israelite origin. I'm not saying the Greeks as a whole, but certain Greeks were Israelites ethnically, but identified themselves as Greeks. George Christakos, Integrative Problem Solving in a Time of Decadence, page 116. It turned out that Plato's pure forms those unseen things that gave rise to everything else were made out of subatomic particles. A surreal collection of electrons, neutrinos, gluons, and quarks of all directions. It turned out that Plato's pure forms, those unseen things that gave rise to everything else were made out of subatomic particles. A surreal collection of electrons, neutrinos, gluons, and quarks of all directions. The earth was without form and void, and darkness was over the face of the deep, and the Spirit of God was hovering over the face of the waters. Genesis chapter 1 verse 2. The earth was without form, form, subatomic particles. That which has been is what will be. That which is done is what will be done. And there is nothing new under the sun. Ecclesiastes chapter 1 verse 9. There is nothing truly novel in existence. Every new idea has some sort of precedent or echo from the past. There is nothing new under the sun.